and crack. Yes, this is generally how I am on a daily basis. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spot the Liberal. I'm Kevin the Skull Anderson. You know, January 20th, 2021 was the day that America died. And this country has been dying the most drawn out death ever since. You know, I really don't understand why this country has to get to such a disturbing point to where the state of our nation as a whole has to deteriorate that badly to where people are stupid enough to vote for someone who is not only dementia suffering, but a 78-year-old pedophile and a racist who never did a damn thing in 47 years in his time as a politician. And then, then, the deep state elects the guy anyway and overthrows the will of the people. That's when this country died, people. America is fucking dead. America is dead. And you know it, and I know it. And the only way that we can bring this country back from the dead is to do a mass purging of every politician in Congress through an executive thing. It's called making an amendment. Here's how this amendment works. Amendment 28. The Two Terms for a Politician Act. All United States citizens that elect government officials and listen closely because this is important must make sure that they serve no more than two terms in office And that's for each and every single sitting and standing member of Congress. Anyone that is a member of Congress should serve no more than two terms. Two terms is the maximum for a president and a vice president. It should be the maximum for all politicians as well. All elected officials in this country. Not just those at the very top, but every last one of them. All 535 of them. And there are 535 people in Congress. 100 in the Senate, 435 in the House of Representatives. Last time I checked. Now, this is also the same den of thieves that supports the people that poison your water, your food, The same people that limits your rights. The same people that works against your security and your president. And then they want you disarmed because they want this country to end up like Venezuela and all these other countries before them. I mean, think about this, okay? Really, really, really think about this. Do you want this country to end up so bad that you can't even get a group of people to perform another nation's national anthem without sounding like, say, this? Just listen to this. Listen to this. How bad is this? (laughs) And our government wants us to be stripped down to nothing more than that. What, are you kidding me? Looking with the way things are going, this is what's probably gonna happen. (laughs) And just think, we're all gonna be forced in a couple of years. We're all going to be forced in a couple of years to recite the Chinese National Anthem. Isn't that a shame? Look how bad they butchered that. Holy shit. But anyway, 
I'm going to I'm going to make this point very very clear to you people, okay? Democrats hate America. They always have. They hate whites, they hate Jews, they hate Christians, they hate conservatives, they hate Republicans, they hate patriots. They believe in climate change reparations, abortions after birth, open borders, banning all guns, repealing the Second Amendment and the Bill of Rights, socialism, communism, and Sharia law. They believe in government taking over business and production. They believe in the elimination of private property and personal rights. They want the greatest nation in the history of the world to end up like that, Venezuela. The same Venezuela that so badly butchered the Chinese national anthem. Can you believe that? The luck that you would have to have to pull that off. So badly. It's just so unbelievable, man. It, it's it's astonishing, man. It's astonishing. And the Democrats want this? No. Of course they want this, but they don't have no idea of how to get there. It's a shame. These people gave up their humanity for a spot in politics. That's what that's exactly what they did. Especially this dumb freaking bartender from Puerto Rico who can't even determine two sentences from each other. And meanwhile, we have deteriorated in a nation that's deteriorated so fast to where we can't even breathe properly. We don't even know how to breathe properly anymore. Back in the World War II days, 80 years ago, teenagers stormed the beach at Normandy into almost certain death. And then meanwhile, nowadays, in the age of COVID, 18-year-olds, the same group of people whose ancestors in World War II, whose grandfathers and great-grandfathers before them, stormed the beach at Normandy, these people need a safe place because words hurt their feelings because they're offended by everything. Well, let me tell you something, people. The truth hurts. And you're going to have to open yourself up to it at some point. We also have a very, very piss poor educational system, in case you haven't figured it out yet. Our educational system is so piss poor. It's practically an extension of the Democratic Party. The media is an extension of the Democratic Party. You know, the Stalinized, Hitlerized, Nazified electoral process that was so badly raped last year when the deep state elected Joe Biden as our president. Our president? Maybe in their eyes, but never in ours, because he wasn't legally elected. No, he was selected. There's a big difference in being elected and selected. Being elected means you won fair and square. Being selected means you rigged an entire election in your favor and got all these big tech companies in Silicon Valley to fact check any posts that discredit that. Here's the thing. Okay, I want you to hear me out. This country is in such deep shit now. This country is in such deep shit now because we thought it would be okay to just sit back and play on our phones and assume that the worst was over when the worst hadn't even begun yet. Meanwhile, we let a bunch of people in Congress overthrow our will. They overthrew our will 
and elected some stupid idiot who can't even put two words together. And these dogs that are barking right now clearly agree with me because they know. They know that Joe, even a dog knows that Joe Biden is not a president. He is a puppet, he is a fraud, he is a cheater, and he is a loser. A big fat loser, and not even a, not even a good one. Not even a graceful one. Joe Biden knows damn well he lost in a landslide. And yet people want us to believe, oh, well, he's president now. Let's all worship Joe Biden because he's God. Let me tell you something, okay, people? Let me tell you something. I'm going to say this plain as day to where you people will understand. There is a page... There are many pages called Joe Biden is not my president on Facebook. Not in all capital letters. And I'm not talking about the knot that you make when you tie your shoes. If you still know how to tie your shoes in this day and age, which most people do not. Sadly. Because most people have the IQ of a fucking pencil. Here's the thing. On February 8th, the Facebook page, Joe Biden is not my president, made a meme. I'm going to break it down for you and break the meme down in a way that you can understand. Because this is the truth. Because this is what happens when Democrats take charge of a nation and stay in power for too long. This is what happens when communists and fascists run cities into the ground knowing that what they do is wrong, but doing it anyway. And in case you're wondering, there are four photographs that best depict what happens when Democrats stay in power much longer than they should. And I'm going to spell it out for you because you need to know this just like I already knew this years ago except I'm trying to share this information with you because if you guys don't know this you're gonna stay dumb for the rest of your lives and you won't see the wool being ripped from under your mouths so here's the thing this is Chicago right 40 years ago, Chicago was not like this. 40 years ago, Chicago was in a much better state of affairs. This is Chicago now. You have BLM, Antifa, Planned Parenthood, a bunch of Chinese hacks running the city into the ground, spraying graffiti on all these buildings and all these apartment complexes. And then you got all these idiots who vote for these morons that do all that. And then Sharia law is established there. It's been established there for almost two decades now. Why? Because some dumb black guy named Barack Obama became a mayor there in Chicago in 2004. He became a mayor. After illegally immigrating to this country through his parents. Now another Muslim is running this nation. This, this, well, it's it's more looking like a nation anyway. But we have another Muslim running that nation into the ground now. That's, that city, I mean. You get what I'm saying. I can't tell cities and nations apart anymore. They're all the same now. Can't you tell? You can tell, right? Here's the thing, all right? The thing is, I really do not understand. And this is just me being philosophical, okay? I really don't understand the people in Chicago who vote Democrat. Because they knew what they were getting was complete bullshit, but they voted for it anyway, and look what they got. 
This is Los Angeles. Most of the people in Los Angeles are living in tents now. Those that are fortunate enough to not live in tents probably voted for Democrats in California who abuse their power on a daily basis. They abuse their power on a daily basis and then you wonder why Los Angeles is just yet another casualty in the war against intelligence and knowledge and common sense and self-education and wisdom. You wonder why Los Angeles is yet another casualty in the war against a constitutional republic that is supposed to be not just in name, but also in reality. Because the fact of the matter is, we live in a time and age where it is socially acceptable to be dumb. I know I've said this a lot in my Spot the Liberal series, but I've said this, and every single time I've said this, it's proven to be true. It has proven itself to be true. It has proven itself to be a fact. It has proven itself to be nothing more than prophecy. I've been warning you guys about this for five years. Dating all the way back to when I started Skull Media Enterprises. Well, almost five years. I lied. Almost five years. It's more like four. But in January of 2017, I started Skull Media Enterprises. And this is San Francisco. You see this guy, this degenerate? He's talking out of his ass, shitting out of his mouth. And then you wonder why it's legal now to shit on the highway. It is legal there to shit on a highway instead of in a toilet like an actual human being would. I shit in the toilet every day. I wipe up my shit with paper towels and toilet paper whenever I can. I know to distinguish paper towels from toilet paper... And I know to dispose of each properly, what, you don't expect me to believe anything that I say? Well, let me tell you something, okay? Here's the thing. Alright. San Francisco is run by a bunch of degenerate fucks who shit themselves, can't stop shitting themselves, and then you wonder why America is the laughing stock of... The whole world laughs at America! The whole world can't stop laughing at America because we constantly shoot ourselves in the nuts. With a rifle, no less. With a rifle. And all because we don't want to recognize that this country is not a democracy, but a constitutional republic. This country is a constitutional republic, and the people in Chicago, and Minnesota, and Los Angeles, and San Francisco, and what you're about to see here in Detroit, these people do not see that. Why? I'll tell you why. Because... It so often happens that we, as a nation, are completely incapable of governing ourselves. The greatest nation in the history of the world is completely incapable of governing itself. And the whole world laughs at us because of this one damning flaw. It's unbelievable. It's astonishing. It's sad. It's mediocre. But it's also eye-opening. We need to wake the hell up and understand that this country is under distress. 
This nation is under distress. And as long as I have an American flag, I will be flying it upside down, sideways, to show that we as a nation are in distress every day. Because we let a bunch of pedophiles and horny old men and women dictate our lives and a bunch of serial killers who quite frankly get away with murder like the Hillary Clintons of the world get away with murder every day when they add more people onto their body count you know hashtag Clinton body count that's a real thing that's actually still going on after almost 50 years who's to say that Barack Obama still isn't calling the shots even though he's been out of office for four years. It figures, man. Let's go on to yet another thing, okay? TV ratings for State of the Union presidential addresses. Now I want you to keep in mind, these are actual real numbers. These are not augmented, these are not fabricated, these are real numbers. These are big numbers, these are important numbers. These are numbers. And I have done my research and a guy named Donald Trump Jr., the son of the 45th President of the United States, and hopefully a future President of the United States himself, came up with this tweet and lambasted Joe Biden for not even to for not being able to eclipse the Oscars. Do you know how bad you have to be as a president to not do more viewership than the Oscars this year? They did about 12 and a half million views on the night of the Oscars. Now, I want you to listen to me carefully, because this is important. You guys need to know this, okay? You guys, and, and, and this, is, this is where it gets really, really strange, because if I didn't show this to you guys, I wouldn't be showing you anything at all. Because even forbidden knowledge is important. You've got to have a little bit of forbidden knowledge to understand what self-awareness really is. And if you have forbidden knowledge, you have all the knowledge in the world. Let us begin. All right? President Trump's one term in office. His State of the Union address in 2017 garnered 48 million people's interest which, as far as I could tell, is, if I'm not mistaken, that's, that's a record. I don't think anybody's been able to eclipse that. In 2018, his State of the Union address, his second one, garnered 46 million people's interest. 46 million people tuned in to watch President Trump speak at the State of the Union in 2018. The next State of the Union address in 2019, President Trump garnered the interest of 46,800,000 people. Compare that, and there was a significant drop in 2020 because people were being brainwashed by a non-existent claim that coronavirus was killing people people left and right, when in reality, the mortality rate was less than 1%. But anyway, President Trump's last State of the Union in 2020 garnered 37.2 million views. A very steep drop, a very big drop, but not nearly as big a drop as the one you're going to see in a couple of moments. Now, why do I say this? Why do I say this? I'll tell you. Because Joe Biden's first State of the Union, you'll never guess this. You'll never guess. Joe Biden's first State of the Union garnered, and this is a real number, by the way, 
11 million 600,000 people. <laughs> you couldn't beat the Oscars, Joe. You're a disgrace. You couldn't outrank the Oscars in viewership. You're a fraud. I mean, look at that number. <laughs> That's got to be one of the lowest rated State of the Union addresses I've ever seen in my... I, I only watched a few seconds of it and I knew it was hot garbage. That's why so many people tuned out of it. It's unbelievable, man. It's... It, <laughs> 11 point6 million people tune in to Biden's first state of the Union. Oh that's not even a third. That's not even a third of Trump's last state of the Union, not even a quarter. Of Trump's first State of the Union in 2017. I mean, really? You're you're probably gonna ask me, really? Are these numbers made up? No, they are not made up. That is the answer. The answer is no, they are not made up. These are real numbers. These are legitimate numbers. These numbers were determined by the Nielsen scale, the Nielsen ratings. You know what the Nielsen ratings are, right? They determine a certain set of numbers based on what people tune into. Look it up on Google. Look it up on Wikipedia. You'll find more about it. But look at the difference between 2020 and 2021. That is a steep fucking decline. A steep fucking decline from last year's State of the Union that Trump gave. Now, Biden gave his State of the Union, and it didn't even garner 12 million views. It couldn't even beat the Oscars! Are you fucking kidding me? It couldn't even beat the Oscars? All the Oscars are just a bunch of celebrity millionaires giving awards to each other and jacking each other off. That's all they do. Hollywood is run by pedophiles and you couldn't even beat the Oscars? Biden, you're a disgrace. You suck. You're a piece of shit. You suck. I'm telling you, and I don't want to make any money doing this on YouTube, because I know what's going to happen if I monetize my videos. YouTube is going to find some way to deem my videos ineligible for monetization, because I'm a Republican, and the people that work at YouTube are Democrats. Almost all of them are Democrats. And even worse, I'm a conservative Republican, so that's a double disadvantage for me. You know that? It is amazing to me, man. It, 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 it astonishes me. It baffles me. It blows my mind. So every day I will be flying my state's flag and my nation's flag under distress until something is fucking done. There needs to be an American revolution like the one we had in 1776 when we tried to gain our independence from the British. You know what the difference is between now and then? Back then, our ancestors actually succeeded. We can still succeed at this revolution. All we've got to do is overthrow our government because we're stronger than the government. We are the fourth branch of government for a reason because we determine who gets into the first three. It's so simple, man. It, it's so remarkably, unfathomably simple. 
And I cannot put this any other way. I am just flabbergasted at how stupid Americans are. I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. And I'm pretty stupid myself, but I'm not stupid stupid. You'd have to be pretty damn far gone to be stupid stupid. You know? But stupid stupid is a special kind of stupid because it reaches new lows of intelligence that modern logic cannot conceive. But you already know that. So ladies and gentlemen, I will end the episode here. And until we meet again next time, I am Kevin the Skull Anderson reminding each and every single one of you to go out, make your case, and do something. Bye. Mm -hmm.